Hello and welcome to the Bristly Stranger channel. My name is Stinger from Stinger's Playground and today with me is Ricketts and Keith, both fine coaches. And we're going to be watching the sales reptiles versus the infested jokes. So it's Skaven versus Lizardmen. What can we expect to see in a match like this? Well, I would probably say a high scoring game. Usually Skaven and both Lizardmen usually try and score a lot of points. So usually we will see at least a couple of touchdowns from both teams. In Ricketts? Yeah. And yes, so um, both teams have got good high movement. So you're looking you're looking at sort of usually a minimum of at least six movement for any of the players. Um, with Skinks and a lot of the Skaven having a much higher movement. So we'll see a lot of uh, a lot of lot of runs, maybe a bit of passing, or you won't see any passing from the sales reptiles because they've got no one to pass to. But the, the Skaven uh, can have throwers, so they might do a little bit of passing. But generally speaking, both of these teams are running teams. So we'll expect to see long runs. All right, well, with that, let's go ahead and jump into the game and see how it pans out. And here we are at Dinosaur Park. Or well, Dinosaur Park, even. Oh. Yeah. Which is, uh, that's, that, that's a lot of big, scaly, muscly things and some frogs. The flea-infested right. team. <laughs> yeah. Infested joke. I mean, you can see the, fl the flies buzzing around these ones. Yeah, you know what I say about London. Like, in every 100 meter, you're at least close to our A rat. So, this works in Blood Bowl 2, I think. So, it looks like it looks like the uh, sales reptiles are kicking off to the Skaven, to the uh, yeah. the, inf the infested joke. So, a little weird setup here, I would say. Uh, usually because. Well, looking at this easily, there's blitzable skinks. Usually you don't want them to be blitzable at all in the first set. Yeah, uh, because the skinks obviously are only strength two. Um, yeah. Same as the gutter runners, but um, they also have stunty, which means that they're much easier to, to hurt. And what we've got, sweltering heat. So that, that might affect some players at the end of a drive. So let's see what yeah. happens with that. And a deep kick. Not the deepest, but pretty deep. Just a push. But go got frenzy. frenzy. Had to re-roll that. Yeah. yeah. Succeeded with the loner too, which is quite interesting. Here comes the blitz on a skink and didn't succeed, only got a push, sadly enough. And the gutter Picking runner going back to pick the ladder runner. Yeah, yep. picked it up, no problem. Higher agility than most of the other players, so much better at picking the ball up. Uh, actually, the highest agility player on the pitch, to be honest, because everyone is free or lower. Yeah. Everyone else. To the block. Get to actually the source down. And so there are there are two uh, there there are two gutter runners there, um, yeah. so movement of eight aren't they? Those those nine. Players. So gutter is runners from movement nine. And the star nine. of the show for this game. So very quick, very quick, even capable of, of uh, one touch, uh, you know, one uh, one, one touch touchdowns touch down. as well. And that was a, that was a foul. Not yes, not be Soros. So they don't get, they don't, little... they don't get injected either, so that's wonderful. <laughs> makes things a little bit easier. Stops the yeah. uh, stops the all the strength four players dominating too much. Here I would never like move that many people against one. Like the the skinks aren't made for punching; they're made for dodging out because of stunt, mm. so they dodge on a one higher. No, not one higher. They dodge in tackle zones without a minus. My bad. Titch yeah, is the one. That's here. right. So, but I still wouldn't like. You want uh, to be able to move around with skinks. You don't want them standing still. And that was a weird choice of going for it. I probably wouldn't have done that even to get a block on the uh, big guy. Especially a one guy block. 
that resulted in a which skull. Then, which it, which yeah. it turned over. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I would probably... Uh, I think uh, it will be a punch on the skink with the rat ogre, and probably a blitz on the skink next to the ball carrier. No, a blitz there. I put, that was probably a misplay from actually my part. Uh, Rewatching this, I don't know why I did that instead of doing on the one in the back. I want to get that Saurus down, I'm guessing. You yep, know, two dice block. Knocks him down. <laughs> No armor break, usually what's happening if you don't have micro blade. Wild animal. He's not doing much. Yeah. Uh, like he did, if I remember correctly, he did pretty well under the match. Uh, hmm. oh. oh, double skull. Luckily not through the armor. Yeah. That, this was one thing that happened to like, early. Uh, Burning both rerolls, turn one and two, is never good. Like, it would probably have been better on the one die to just leave it go. Like, through the armor, Abrat. Abrat Ham Lincoln gets KO'd. Yeah. But, like, just leaving that uh, skull there uh, instead of trying to reroll it would probably have been better. Uh, I also understand the reroll of it because you have blocked, so it's owned on a skull that's bad for you. Uh, doing it with the storm worm in that is. So it was like rolling a double one when you dodge. Like that's kind of what happened. We're getting armor some armor breaks, breaks now. Oh, that was practically dead. Or and is he? I take it. I take it there was no. There was there's no apothecary. Oh. oh, it wasn't on that apothecary mostly because uh, you usually don't waste on a lion rat. Like, no. uh, as Gaven, you have higher priorities uh, than a lion rat. If it's a badly hurt, you might use it uh, just to get the player instantly back. But on a dead, it's quite a high chance of it actually being a bad thing still. So I probably would never use an apple there. Like I did that time too. Um, blitzing with the ball carrier here. Getting an armor break. Probably just a stun. No, knock it's it a KO. Oh, knockout. Always a little risky, but it worked out that time. Like, even if it was only a push, I would still the gut runner would still be able to move around. Go. And that's... I've, if I remember correctly, I misclicked that going for it too. Which made me quite mad in the game. Um, because I wasn't counting on doing a going for it because I had zero rerolls. You don't want extra dice when you don't have built in ones like Shore Feet. Bradney Spears is stunned. Getting an extra ball, uh, extra people on the ball if it. Yeah, making sure you got those tackling zones on there. Yeah. Uh, I would have yeah. actually not. Uh, I, would, I would say there's a miss. Uh, put off players here. I would put the uh, Saurus a square further down because it uh, makes it harder to dodge out. And another going for it fail. And it would have also been, it would have been easier for the Skink to actually get the ball too if he had put the Saurus further down the field. Right now it doesn't look that good for the Skaven team. Uh, Three people out, I think, and two, one people standing, I think. So, and a lot of fouling going on, and that's Alfred Hitchcock is knocked out. Alfred Hitchcock is knocked out. That's yeah. not good. So yeah, here I go. Here it's a classic try to surf. And gets punished for trying it. Yeah. Uh, quick turns. Really quick turns. Uh, one misplay I did here too. I would probably have stood up some people before trying to maybe dodge out. Uh, I got too greedy with trying to get a serve. It would have been better to standing people up trying to dodge them out. If I failed to dodge, so be it. Then when everything like that is done, go for the serve. Uh, but by doing this, it kind of bit me. Uh, 
it really didn't work out. Uh, especially now because that's a surf back. Yeah. Right. And you don't want your strong ones off the field. Like, they're great players. You want them on the field. Uh, yeah, they're, they're great. Yeah, any any player that's got move seven, a, a reason, you know, a reasonable average strength and block yeah, is and a great a player. Yeah. Like, if they have block or dodge, like, still a player you want on the field. Um, here we will probably. Uh, there was a good moving rat ogre, like the rat ogre didn't do a wild animal on a four plus. That's great. Uh, actually, a little bit of a misplay there too with the uh, with moving the lion man into into the square of the uh, saurus. Also, a little bit of bad luck on the dodge, or not the dodge, the block there with my skull. Yep, one dice. Uh, so, it'll yeah. get you. So far, I think we have seen maybe five skulls from the Skavens. Some have been re rolled. So, so far, not the best scrolls. And you can just see how quick these skinks are. Happily moving up the field. I don't even think they moved the full movement there. No. Basically, just putting a cage around that one skink. Yeah, they moved six instead of eight, but I, it's you usually try and stall. You want to have the Saurus player too. The Saurus, I think, moved full movement, but uh, it's only moving six on the Saurus, so you don't, you can't, you don't want to move without going for it to just get us cage higher up. And that's the thing I said with it was kind of stupid of doing the of doing a uh, moving the line rat into base on the Saurus. Just a stun. Which also quite sad because it was quite close to actually being a KO. It was one of a KO with Mighty Blow. So yeah. yeah. Dodge successfully without a reroll so far. Just moving players up, trying to get better positioning to try and maybe blitz the ball here. Uh, what I did there was moving the play back to get a better tackle zone so they can't just go forward to the gutter runners. They need to try and dodge through. Uh, sad enough, I failed the dodge on the. And that's oh, yeah, a touchdown. Exactly. With that score, that puts Princess Baxter in the lead. One to nothing. Oh, here comes the cheerleaders. Look away, everybody. Look away. Welcome to the Bristly Strangers channel, where we have orcs <laughs> as cheerleaders. That's Those just a horrible, you. horrible sight, isn't it? <laughs> orcs with uh, nipple tassels. There we go. That's, yes, that's you know, what you, what you, you haven't turned on to the late night show on TV. This is still the Bristol Strangers <laughs> channel. Mm -hmm. um, so now you just see like a setup that probably minimizes the risk of a blitz going through. Changing okay. weather tonight, which is pretty nice. Uh, it's a touch back. Who's going to get the ball? It's going to be handed back to the capture runner. And got a runner in the middle has the ball. Okay, here so is got a blitz from um, the Rato. Yeah, uh, I would actually say it's quite a misplay. Uh, you could have put a player up next to the skink and done a surf on the Saurus, which would probably have been better and just quite mark the skink. Instead, there's no one down like it's a free die into a free die like most of the times it should work this time it didn't here you see just a marking of a player to yeah. try and, and and just one thing to to be aware of as well the um the saurus is only have an agility of one so yeah they are, usually they, aren't gonna be, they aren't going to be dodging out no unless they're very lucky Just a push. Here's the uh, thing, I wouldn't have followed. I wouldn't have followed with that skink. Because following with that skink is just saying, hey, I want to get blocked by the line rat. 
it's I had just a lot a of armor build. Breaks. Yeah. Well, it's armor value 7 on the most of the Skavens, so usually they should be true. But the thing is, even even the, the Sauruses have got a good movement, so that's... Yeah, uh, their movement oh. Red dice. Um, that was, yeah. that was a red one. I would have one. never done that block. Uh, that no. block is such a bad position. Uh, because it makes just, hey, you can just get through here and punish with words pretty decently and because of the movement of Skaven is usually high you can get through and now because it's a down player the Skaven only needs one going for it and a dodge and they will be a touchdown there you go right at the and last turn on the last turn of the half David Ruffin and now we will actually see regular human cheerleaders on the rat side and I don't know why, both, but... Both, and both the uh, the Lizardman players are still knocked out. Yeah. Uh, and the Skaven, how many come Get back? Get back, back. Yeah. So the Skaven is in the lead of players, somehow, against Armor Value 9. <laughs> That's not even halftime yet. This is the final turn. Yeah. And the right. uh, Sales Reptiles get an extra team reroll, but that's only for one turn. And because of the setup, they can't get a one-turn touchdown. Oh, that's an injury. On the right Gandhi Gandhi. Is injured. Badly hurt. No apple use. There's a push on Abrahat Lincoln. Another follow-up block, which was and also it's a push. Still a push. Bratney Spears goes down. No armor break, thankfully. I think the listen, uh, the Skaven coach is pretty happy with that one. <laughs> uh, and still just a push. He's still standing. A skink will try a punish here. Will it succeed? It's just a push. So, I blocked one blitz used and nothing happened that's quite good so are they going to try no they can't even pick mm -hmm. the ball up going to go for one of those vanity passes uh, and uh, still pick it up. <laughs> so good thing is now uh, the sales reptile prince of Fixter's team will have another shot of getting the chaos back yep uh, oh, hopefully... and it's, it's all to play for one yeah on. no the only thing is now the Skaven is two people that's permanently gone and they got one of the Chaos back so the Skaven is one down for this half or this drive. But, but importantly, importantly, one of the Sauruses is out. Here comes the kick. Alright, well we got so, another changing weather of nice. So the ball will scatter one extra square. And it scatters to the line of scrimmage and back. Quite a shallow kick, which can both work good for the scaling team and the armor. Team. And that's the knockout. Brad Pitt, the rat Pitt knockout. is scaled. Hmm, looks like Becky is moving up some skinks. Maybe to protect the ball. Here comes another one. So here, I think, um, in my opinion, that sales reptile is too focused on one side uh, right now moving two extra skinks to the uh, side where the ball is I would probably send just one of them over there because especially now moving an extra source there too they're kind of over committing especially moving that player back you always want if the other opponent is over committing to blocking your side you want to be able to easily switch to the other side Oh, uh, right up. now, yeah, that's a fail. Yeah, that's Double fail. Another fumble. Yeah, Skinks are having it, a hard time it, picking up the ball. Yeah, but it's in a good position. Like the rat team can't get to it this turn. That's decent. It's an injury. Oh, Luther is an injury. Yeah, that's an injury there. I saw no, Rattis. No long-term effect though. Sad enough. Uh, moving the player back, I probably shouldn't have moved 
to that spot. Uh, I was too hopeful of the wild animal actually succeeding. Should I probably just move one back and then don't like going for it? Uh, what I'm doing, what the Skaven is doing now, is not trying to overcommit, putting some threats that will come from behind if you fail to uh, get the ball again. There was a dangerous choice of trying to pick up the ball. The Dodgers wasn't with the Skaven player. But let's see if the Skinks can actually pick the ball up. But they're going for a block first. Through the armor, that's and that's an injury. injury. Ooh, injury on a... Ooh, and that's a niggling injury as well. Had to use the Apothecary, and it's missed next game instead, though. You don't want either on a Stormwormen. It's your almost your bread and butter. Like, the Gatorade Nurse are good. There's a, they're a one-scoring threat. But... The Stormwormen are, on average, the more valuable player on the pitch because he has block, he has good movement, good agility, and usually works pretty darn well. In other news, the Skink finally picked up the ball. Yeah, somehow. Here comes a Saurus. As they say, they must have glue on their fingers. And another Saurus moving forward. Here also, a little weird setup here, uh, putting the sources where they're being put. Definitely overloading that area to try to make it very difficult to get that ball out of that hand. Yeah. But right now, like, you can surf or, like, Shane push in by the setup that I've been doing here. Uh, Rattoga can double push to move the skink, like, being next to the skink. Sadly enough, he doesn't get the push uh, that he would have, like, I don't know why I picked the defender stumble instead of a push there, because if you did the push, you would have gotten it to be next to the ball carrier with the prehensile tail, and you always want to put a minus on the tackle zones of dodgy players. Yeah. And a failed pod for that. Will probably be oh, only a one in six chance of them actually making it, and he fails it again. So he had a roll of six. Oh, that had to be a misclick. That's a bad roll. I don't know if I would have re-rolled that though. And that's gonna free up the skink right there. Becky's gonna run it in for a touchdown. We have a touchdown. The skink has scored yet again. Well, that's a touchdown. Uh, yeah, a quite quick touchdown though but the Skavens are down another player now so if they get their source back the Skaven are down three players and there comes the beautiful Orc team again. Of all Orc them mesmerized by that. We're all mesmerized by that. So dead ninja hey. one. The Saurus is still, still knocked out. out. Three on the dead ninja. And, and still one knocked out. Still one knocked out. So yeah. The Skaven team is two down and it's I think six turns left. Here comes the kickoff. And we got changing weather again. It's going to be nice. Oh, yeah, it was this one, too. Uh, again, failed uh, block by the uh, Rat Ogre. Succeeding with the lone reroll. Quite risky to do because it's on a four plus, but it worked out. Can yeah, you get a skink away here? Skink. It up. gets blocked. It's only a KO though. Sadly enough, only a KO. And then moving to, to go back that one. Yeah. That's a good choice of doing. Probably here we'll just see maybe a handover or a pass. It's a pass mm. that fails. The ball lands in a good good way though, but Quite sad to see a ball failing that early with a one. It's the curse of rolling a two plus. Mm. Yeah. Just and like that's every through the armor, time. and Bratney Spears is not out. It's been a lot of armor breaks, but it is when it's low armor value teams. Like the highest valued player on with armor on a Skaven Here team comes is the blitz. going for it. 
That's so get enough. the target down. Unlucky Not an armor break. Yeah, unlucky with the armor break. I was just about to say that. Or lucky for the Skaven team. Um, they need every player they can get at this time. Oh, failing to go for it wrong. Can I fail twice? No, they succeed. Moving and they got up. Oh. And failing to pick the ball up. And having a bit of a it bobble lands, around there. It lands in a good square for the Skaven team, yeah. though. The Skaven needs a blitz. Um, where from is quite hard to see right now. They might just dodge out. And they do actually do that. Pick it up on a 3+, plus and runs away. So now they want to try and go as far down as possible to try and minimize the risk of a skink following them. Because higher movement on a uh runner. And the rat but ogre down. But it. Down. Yeah. At least the Taurus is down. Yeah, but this makes if I can see correctly, if it gets that player down, I'm going for it or two for the other Taurus and he will blitz the gut runner. Here is the blitz. Oh, but a fail going for it. Fail the going for it roll. Every team is out of rerolls and just a push. Push to the sidelines. Stunt the move. Gonna make it a bit more difficult for the gutter runner to dodge out. It isn't that hard to. You wouldn't dodge out. If you put the players in the right positions and the dice are with you. You can Shane push him out of there, so you only need one dodge. I would never move that skink to that position, because that just makes it so you can... It was a good spot to put the other Saurus, so I need to give a compliment to that one. Yeah, it definitely helped block your Rat Ogre from doing any surfing. And we have a Gutter Runner coming in to give it a little bit of assist, it looks like. Yep. And, uh, yeah, here comes a surf. And a push. That'll do it. Which will give you a surf. I don't know why it was a follow-up there, though. Uh, the follow-up would actually be worse. Because you uh, would have been... Failed the dodge. the 3 plus, though. Not the 4 plus. The 3 plus for the reroll. That's quite bad. If we if we succeeded there, it would probably be a tied game. Hmm. We'll probably see a maybe a blitz on the rat over. Knocking him down, not through the armor though, and Skink is picking the ball up, Picked up. and managed it. Wow. It wasn't a blitz on the roger. Going for that third touchdown possibly here. Mm. And here comes uh, a line rat. And Get makes it the, down. That makes the explosion. The ball scatters not to a super good space. Moving a line rat up, marking an, a skink. Looks like we are got a gutter runner going for the ball. Yep, got the ball. And moving forward. Oh, failed on the going for it. Been a lot of failing the two pluses. Mm. And a bad stun there for the gutter for the Skaven team. You don't want the gutter runners to get stunned. Not that easily. A good scatter though. Two turns left for both players. Just a push. And the skink coming around to support. And that's would, a rat ogre would, down. The rat ogre. Yeah. I would never put that skink player over there though, because putting a skink in attack zone is not something you want to do. And Mistake was made here too. Now you need to dodge in with the other skink if you want to be able to pick up the ball. Yeah, and you gotta dodge out. We actually did it though. Yeah, 
which is insane in its own way. So okay. now it's just a blitz on the skink. It's a 2 plus. Doesn't get it down though. But shame pushing will give it another go. And that's that through. Knocks him down. Ball scatters a bad spot. Wild animal doesn't succeed. And the storm woman moves down the pitch. So this listen mean Lizardman team can't score. And that's Oh, Dinosaur was injured. Yeah, but that means that the good. Skaven team won't be able to score either. Mm. Just missing next game, so it could have been a lot worse on that for sure. Yeah. Because if you stand up the player, I don't think No wait, it can just make it with a go for it. Yeah. yeah. So nice. now you need Heading. to get a player to pick up the ball and then pass it. Yeah. The blitz here, I understand it. It's true to not be able, like, to get you a square free of movement and not be able to be needed he to go. Uh... Can he succeed with the passing, though? Oh, no, he can't. And that's going to be the end of the game. Congratulations, Becky Princess Baxter, for beating Kaith the Exiled in a 2-1 brawl. Let's go ahead and look at some of the stats. Here we can clearly see, like, the armor breaks was in favor of Skink, the Lizardman, doing 14 armor breaks instead of Skaven's measly 7. And you can see that you can see that the sales reptiles had a lot of the ball possession, uh, well, a bit yeah. more than... The, uh, than the, the Skaven. Um, obviously, more of an occupation in the opponent's half as well. And they've almost, well, not quite doubled, but there's the, substantially more blocks were, were put on, on the Skaven. But then again, the Skaven team isn't really a uh, a blocking team. I saw managed to get eight, uh, so that must have been uh, the MVP, MVP. And, uh, and a touchdown. Yeah. And then touchdown T on T Rex. And two injuries. Injuries with the dinosaur and one with the sorry to lay. For the infested jokes, though, we have B Rat Pit picking up the MVP. Alfred Hitchcock with a injury. Dave Rattenham with a touchdown and Sock Rat Tease with an injury. And let's have a look at the dice rolls. Roll quite average on every single one of them. Almost everyone is around twenty. Skaven doing a lot of rolls, as a Skaven team usually do, uh, almost doubling every dice roll. However, with the final score being 2-1, to one, Becky, or Princess Baxter, has to be very excited to not only be one win and one tie for the season so far, but also beating one of the most experienced coaches in Bristly Bowl 2. Yeah, so that was... That was a, a very exciting game. Um, I know two one, two two one uh, wins are sometimes um, not not the most exciting, but that one certainly could have gone could have gone to being a draw very very easily. So uh, so that was a very exciting game. It definitely looks like Becky is having a good season so far. I'm excited to see how. It will continue to go for her. Man, the lizard men are something else. They're hard to grab a hold of, and uh, they're very, very easy to dodge in and out of things. But thank you very much for joining me, Stinger from Stinger's Playground, Case from Case of Exiled, and Ricketts. Thank you very much for everybody being here. Thank you for joining us here on the Bristly Strangers channel. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Tell all the coaches what they did right, what they did wrong, down in the comments below. You know where that is. For Bristly Stranger, we will see you guys in the next one.